Father and Son. For Jesus did in fact claim to be of the same nature as the Father. This was the very reason the Jews tried to stone Jesus so many times. That the religious leaders did not believe that Jesus was truly the Son of God was certain. For Paul said, if they had, they wouldn't have created, uh, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. 2 Corinthians 2.8 the Jews, because of unbelief, were mistaken about who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. But they were not mistaken about who Jesus claimed to be. Right. John 10, 31, 33. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone Him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered Him, saying, For, for good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. When it looked as though Jesus would slip through their hands at the so-called trial, Pilate, seeing through the pretense of the Jewish leader, said, I find no fault in this man. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, I don't intend this sermon to be proof that Jesus is God. Before, because if you believe at all on the authority of the Scriptures as the infallible Word of God, then you certainly believe what it says in Isaiah 9-6. It's uh -huh. plain and simple. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. His name shall be the mighty God. For all the things He does are mighty. They are uh -huh. things which no one else but God can do. Yeah. And He will continue to astonish us and to astound us with His mighty and marvelous glories. When mankind was created and brought into the work of God, there had been already many wonderful, mighty works accomplished. And He did all this for our benefit. They are mighty glories and mighty accomplishments, but they fade and grow dim in comparison to the splendor of His final work in us. When this world is done away, and when the corruptible gives way to the incorruptible, all the things will grow dim in, in comparison to that. Amen. Speaking as a man, God's glories, for that's what they are, His glories, are testimony to the goodness of God. For they are those that we will be able to take with us. They are eternal glories. Yeah. They come from Him. And we, we continue to have them. They will sort of like just pile up on top of one another. They'll just never go away. They'll just, they'll just yeah. continue to grow and, and continue to increase because they are, are eternal. His, his gifts of blessings are overabundant. And, and we as the vessels are small. And they prevent us from being able to receive all the things that He has to give us. They're like overflowing in us even now. And, and we, we haven't yet even realized what God has done for us yet. We, we ask God then to enlarge us yes. and make yes. us bigger. God gives gifts to all men. He gives gifts even to the heathen. God blesses them. But they are not everlasting gifts. They're temporal gifts. However, to those who have chosen the best gifts, they are eternal. They're everlasting gifts He gives. The gifts the mighty God gives are eternal and everlasting the greatest gift is the gift of Himself. He gives us Himself. His giving of grace has already become unending even now as we are absorbed into Him. Our glory is in the Lord. We glory in what He has done and we will forever glory in the mighty demonstrations of God's vastly superior nature. Amen. The mighty is that. Well, he was able to lay aside his deity in order to put on human flesh. For the joy that was set before him, Jesus took on our lowly nature so that we could take on his divine nature. Amen. For God to have come in the manner in which he did and to do what he chose to do was so immense and so contrary to human nature, it has the power to draw all men to it. Amen. Amen. Talking about the mighty work of God. Uh -huh. Certainly, the most mighty act of God is revealed in this. In this redemption of mankind. It has more force of impact and influence than any other event 
ever. It has the potential to shape destiny in every way. This is a mighty God when He can do something that affects all things, even the seen and the unseen. All the things that were affected, both in heaven and earth, are, have been accomplished in the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. His resurrection and His exaltation and all the things that Christ has done and all the implications, I suppose if we knew them all, a book, the books of the world could hold them all. He's, he's done so many things. He is mighty. The point of all Scripture is Jesus Christ because He is a, the mighty God. The Father and the Holy Spirit are seen in perfect unity as they work and to administrate the purposes of the Father as, as worked out in Jesus Christ. Amen. And they are all perfectly one working together. And if I do not fully understand this, and we hear uh, others say that this is not so, doesn't necessarily mean this is not true. This, is, this doesn't mean this isn't true. Uh -huh. Yeah. We, we can't be slouches in our thinking. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. We, it's, it's demanded of us to, to sit up in our chairs mentally and, 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 to, and, and to think about these things. And, and we, when we exhaust our ability to think and to, and to understand, then we ask God to increase us Amen. and to enlarge us and help Amen. us. Amen. There are many things that are real, revealed throughout the accounts in God's Word that gives us information about the world in which we live. Uh, some work about what angels do. And there's a little information about Satan and the acts of men. But these are all gradually outlined against the light of what the Father's holy purpose is in Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Satan and the angels and what men have done, they're all incidental to the point what Jesus, uh, what God is really trying to show is how they perform a divine work, or how they divine a, uh, how they uh, work a divine function, in, in the heavenly agenda and this eternal purpose of God. The scriptures say, "Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me." Now, mm -hmm. John five thirty nine. When I consider the mighty God, one who is powerful and unlimited in His expression of Himself, I think of the scriptures. In Colossians 1, and we've read them already. Yeah, yeah. This scripture works together with what we have discussed earlier mm -hmm. in our example of, of the creation of God. Mm -hmm. This scripture starts out in the 11th verse by saying, According to His glorious power, we have redemption by His blood, even forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on to say, Who is an image of the invisible God? For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things. And even and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things He might have the preeminence, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. John says of Jesus, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon our hands of handle, the word of life. Amen. We had the testimony of the disciples. Jesus appeared in the midst of the disciples. They were talking about his resurrection. Jesus suddenly appeared and said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you see me have. And Jesus Luke 24, 39. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. These are examples of the